Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod for the Wentworth DT40L. Unfortunately, it is not selectable in this menu, so we can just choose any bus we want. And then we're going to start off by doing a bus route, as you can tell by the menu. So I'm going to say, let's do a route in Utah, USA. And oh, both of these look equally long. We're probably not going to finish it, but we'll start off with this one. Before we do any driving, let's go ahead and equip the part required for the mod, and it's just a single part. You go to the frame, and you choose the stubby frame option. And once it loads up, you'll notice from the back, it doesn't look too short. Like, if you look to this, you might just think it's a normal bus from the back. That is, until you see it from the side, and you realize, yeah, this bus is ridiculously small. You could probably fit as many people as you can fit in this bus in just two vans. And it looks ridiculous when you drive it. Like, just look at the wheel moving right here. It doesn't look right because the wheel is so far back from the front of the bus because the bus is so short now. Again, though, from the right camera angle, you might just think it's the angle you're looking at the bus. Like, right here, you don't really notice how short it is. So what's the benefit of having a really short bus like this? It's really easy to stop right here. Look at that. We got, like, 10 feet in either direction where we could have stopped. It went really, really easily. And for some reason, the bus stops over there, and we're stopping on this side of the road. So the people who are sitting in the little rest spot, they got to cross the street before they get in the bus. Seems like a little bit of a bad design by the bus stop placement committee. Or maybe they had a really good reason for it. I don't know. I really don't know why they couldn't just put two places for people to sit. One on the left, one on the right. Then you don't have to cross the street to get in the bus. Is it necessary? No. But it's nice if there's traffic coming constantly, then it means the people who want to go on the bus, they're just staring there waiting for a lull in traffic, and the bus driver's just staring at them, and everybody just wants to go, but nobody can do anything until the traffic slows down, or maybe somebody in the traffic will let the walkers through, unless one of them's like in a wheelchair and they go really slow, in which case they're probably not going to let through. And that right there is probably the ideal way to corner with this thing. It really does not have the greatest of churning radiuses. It's not that much better than a normal bus, but... If you start e-breaking this thing, it goes around corners real nicely. So here we go. We're going to try to e-brake this corner. So we'll go like that and a little bit more e-brake. Beautiful. That was really, really nice. And I do not think I could have gone through that corner nearly as fast with a normal bus. It doesn't accelerate that fast, though. It has the same engine as normal bus, and it's a lot lighter. But the engine really isn't made for speed. It's just made for moving the massive weight of a bus. So all the extra torque doesn't really do too much. It is technically faster, but it's not like, oh, I notice it all the time. I only notice it's fast because we're on a downhill section right there. So let's go ahead and stop the bus. Let all these imaginary dudes in. These guys don't have to cross the streets. Just right in. Super simple. And we're going to AJ's Auto Repair because this bus is about to get wrecked eventually. Not sure how much I actually want to be doing to driving the bus. Maybe we'll drive the bus for about five minutes is what I'm going to say. And then after we do it for five minutes, we'll go ahead and stop driving it and we'll go do some crash testing with the bus. Got a nice downhill section right here. We're going to probably top this thing out. I think this is the last gear it has, right? Yeah, it's not upshifting, so this is as high as it goes. And we're going to try to stop right at the last second right here. So there, go, go, go. Come on. Or don't go, don't go, don't go. I overshot that a little bit. I wanted to stop like as close as I possibly could, so that's where I wanted to stop. And watching that thing back up, you know, I'm thinking we could probably gas brake dip this thing and have some fun with that. Maybe even do a wheelie with it if we time it right. That's definitely something I want to try in a bit. So we'll close the doors, raise the bus, and we're off and... Yeah, just look at that. Look how much lift the bus gets when it accelerates. That's because all of the engine's weight is in the rear. And when the bus is really long, it's not as bad. But when the bus is short, it just tips way easier to the rear. I totally bet we could do a wheelie with this thing if I time the gas and brake pedals correctly. It won't be a huge wheelie because we'll just end up hitting the back of the vehicle because it overhangs so far from the rear wheels. And what in the world is going on here? We're going to drive on the dirt now? This, I do not expect. I haven't done many bus routes, and I did not know that some of the bus routes would actually tell you to drive on the dirt road. And we're going to the industrial ruins, so I guess this is just the ideal route for a bus going to there. Although it really doesn't feel like it would be the ideal route for a bus. I'm pretty sure we could get to where we were going with less dirt road driving, but hey, if the bus route's telling me to go this way, we're going to go this way because we don't want to freak out the passengers. If every time a passenger gets on this bus and this is the route we take, well, we're going to take that route still because people will get really antsy if you start taking different routes. Like, are we actually going the right way? Is he going the wrong way? Did I get on the wrong bus? What bus is this? This guy's an idiot. This is a new driver. Where's the old driver? I miss the old driver. And before you know it, 
you got a mutiny on your bus and one of the passengers is now driving the bus and you're tied up in the back and they're taking your treasure and you realize, wait a minute, I wasn't a bus driver. I was a captain of a pirate ship this whole time. All right, so I've been driving on this dirt road for a little bit longer than I expected. And it's all uphill, so we can't really go that fast. Like right here, we're going 20 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour. Not really fast enough to have any fun. We're just flooring it and making our way up the hill. So I'm going to just drive this thing off the hill once I see a good spot. And actually, I think I see a good spot right up here. So once we pass those shrubs, we're going to dive. And dive in. Dive in. All right, here we go. Here is the first crash with the mini bus. Got pieces flying off all over the place. Is it going to flip over? Is it going to stay upside down? Looks like it is stuck upside down. So we can take a look at it and see the damage right there. So I don't really see anything strange about the crash because it was a pretty gentle crash. It all looks pretty reasonable there. So let's go ahead and change up the map for a map where we could do some crash testing and driving. So how about East Coast USA? This should actually be a pretty good test for the bus. The normal bus would probably have some difficulty maneuvering out of here. The stubby should have absolutely no problem whatsoever, I would think. So let's go with the zebra version. We're going to get it in sea blue, which actually doesn't change anything because the zebra paint job covers everything on the bus, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, just looks like the regular zebra tours bus. So now we're going to go ahead and go for the stubby frame, and it should look the same. It'll still have the zebra tours logos on it and stuff. Just be a lot smaller. So yeah, it still says zebra tours on the back. Doesn't say it on the side, but it has the color scheme at least, which is what's important to me right now. So let's see how it does maneuvering out of here. Full steering to the left, and then we accelerate and go nice and slow and oh my goodness wow that was actually really really good look how tightly that thing maneuvered right there i am impressed so you know earlier i said the training radius wasn't that much better than a normal bus i wasn't entirely correct there it doesn't feel much better when you're driving it at high speeds but when you're doing a real low speed maneuver like that it feels excellent maybe the normal bus feels excellent there too i don't know but i was really really happy with that Let's do that again. Full steering to the side and then slow movement. How tight can it go? Look at how tight that was. That is amazing. Like we went up onto the curb and I truly didn't expect that. That's awesome. All right. So remember earlier though, when I was saying we were going to do a wheelie with this thing. Let's go ahead and try to do that now. So all you need to do is just kind of go bouncing back and forth between the gas and the brakes to get this thing to bounce back and forth. So you go like that. There we go. There we go. And then you just keep doing that. Oh, I saw the back end scrape. I saw some sparks go off of it. So that's probably about as high as we can get without modifying the bus. I'm sure we could do it much more consistently if we had a better road, though. Like right here, we have a road with bumps in it and it's curving. And you can't really steer the bus when the front wheels are in the air. It's not going to do anything. And there's also all these bushes and trees like blocking the view. I was trying to do it right here, but then all these things are messing you up. Right here, I'm just trying to figure out the timing properly. And then we're going to have one last attempt at this. And this is going to be the best one we've done, all right? We're going to do three scrapes in a row. That's the goal. If we can do three scrapes in a row, I consider this a success. We'll try to do it right here, but I don't know if I have enough straight away, to be honest with you. I think we might run out of road before we can do three in a row. Because you got to get a little bit of momentum going before it starts working. Like, there we go. We got the momentum going, but we're running out of road. Ah, uh, these roads suck for this, man. I just want a little bit of a straightaway. All right, we're going to try it again right here. Three scrapes. Here we go. Gassing and braking, gassing and braking. There's one, two... Three scrapes! That was three scrapes and we ran out of road already! Oh uh, man, if we were on grid map, it'd be so much easier to do that, but I managed it. I managed my goal, I am happy. Now let's go ahead and crash this thing. I know there's some trees virtually anywhere, so how about these trees? They look pretty appealing, don't they? There we go, nice little crash right there. Just looking at the damage, looks perfectly reasonable over there. A little bit strange right in the middle of the bus right there at the seam. How's this side look? That side looks perfect, so we'll go ahead and reset it. And we're going to be doing a few more crashes, and then I want to go to grid map and do a little bus versus big bus crash, but that's a little bit later. There's also a Hewer version of this that I got to try driving with its rocket boosters and all that. So heading on out, I want to keep things simple. We're going to have a straight head-on collision with that brick building right there. Going about 20 to 25 miles per hour right there. Perfect. Uh, it looks like it should be completely drivable after that. Yep. And it might be even better at doing wheelies now because... More of the vehicle's weight has been pushed to the rear because the front has been collapsed in a little bit. Can't do any higher wheelies, unfortunately, though, because we'll still hit the back of the vehicle. So steering is not as good as it used to be. Here's a nice place for a bus to crash, right at the bus stop. All right, that is a side-only impact. So you can take a look at that. Can it still steer, though, to get away? Yes, it can. 
And that front wheel right there is completely in the air. It's not doing anything. So there's another impact because I wasn't looking at where I was going. And that might, might be stuck. No, it's not. We could keep going. All right, does that wheel steer at all? I think neither wheel steers really anymore. Like, yeah, we do nothing when we try to steer it. It's basically endless wheelies, but you always crash into the pole because you can't go left or right. Nothing says you can't crash into it at a high speed, though, except that the bus is actually stuck and it can't move. That says you can't crash into a high speed, actually. That's fine. You know what? I didn't even want to be crashing into that anymore. I want to do a different crash anyways. I want to crash this thing into the river. That sounds like it might be fun. We just got to make our way there, which is a little bit time consuming because there's so many curves right here. It's like left, then right, then left, then right. Also, you don't want to hop the curbs with this thing because it can damage the suspension, I've noticed. Like, what we did right there could have damaged it. Let's see, is this still driving straight or is it pulling to any side? Um, Looks like it's driving straight, but you just got to be careful about that because I have ruined a bus just by kind of hopping the curbs like you saw right there. So this is what I want to do. I want to climb over this thing and escape to freedom. I think the best way to do that would be popping a little bit of a wheelie before we go over that curb. Before we try that, I do want to save the spot, though, just in case things don't go correctly. So we'll save it right here. And here we go. We got to make sure we bounce this thing correctly. So gas, brake, and forward. Perfect. It went over it. Oh, but it's just a little bit too long. Sure, you can clear the front, but you can't clear the rest of it. So we're going to go ahead and bring this thing back some, and we're going to try a different strategy. We're just going to try going at it really, really fast. So we'll bring it all the way back to that intersection right there. And we'll save this spot and then go forward. Hopefully speed will be the solution. And we don't need to do both speed and bouncing because that's just a little bit too complicated. So here we go. Nope. No, we don't go. And it's actually stuck. You know what? Here's the easy solution. You grab the bus and then you toss it over the edge. That is the easy and the best solution. We get to even watch it from a cool camera angle. As it tumbles all the way down, the roof just exploded a little bit right there. And now it's going to get flooded with the water. See, that's what I wanted to happen. Now I'm happy. So let's go ahead and swap up maps so we can try out the hero version. I want a map with some big straightaways. So how about we go to Utah, USA? And I don't know for certain this will work. I see no reason it won't work, but there's always the possibility something won't go right and the thrusters just won't go off. I'm assuming it would work, though, because it works with everything else that I've tried so far. So let's go ahead and equip the stubby frame. And the cape's going to look really extra long. It needs like a stubby cape too, right? Oh my goodness, no, scratch that. That looks adorable. And I bet it's going to be fast, but first off, it is adorable. Here we go. First, simple maneuvers. No problem there. Whoa. I, like overdid it a little bit right there, though, because I didn't expect it to do it that well. So we want to go to a straightaway. We got one very, very close by, thankfully. It's right here. We're going to go to the right side and then full speed ahead and see what happens. Here we go. Can I control this thing? It's actually surprisingly controllable. Like, it is slippery a little bit, but I can control it no problem. We're going about 160 miles per hour, and I lost control. I have completely lost control, and there's a 160 mile per hour crash that just absolutely shredded this thing. You see its axle just rolling around, trying to come back. It's like, come back to me. I am part of you, but ain't happening. Nuh uh. And that's kind of interesting. Somewhere on the vehicle, there is a purple fan. I almost just want to find the purple fan and figure out, well, why is it purple? Huh. All right, let's go ahead and try this straight away right here, though. Before I do that, though, can this thing do a big, mean wheelie with the extra rocket power? Let's see. Oh, no, it can't. Because the way the thrust puts down the power, it doesn't put it down in a way where the front actually lifts up because the thrusters are mounted to the top of the bus. That's too bad. Oh, well. Full speed ahead with this, and we are going to wreck it into something. We're going to be going almost 200 miles per hour here, maybe even 200. I think we're going 200, but the speedometer doesn't read it because we're kind of flying through the air as we did that. And we have just decimated this bus. I'll try to do a crash that's a little bit less of a decimator there. Maybe we'll have something identifiable at the end there. I'm going to go 200 miles per hour again. And we'll try to like pop it in the air, let it fly, and then crash. And hopefully the flight will slow it down a little bit because it's like throwing a brick through the air. It can't fly that fast, can it? Careful now. Don't hit the rocks on the edge. That was close. Our engine is just blown up. That's good. 200 miles per hour obtained. And then let's hit the bridge right here. See if we can fly off of that. No, I have flown off of that with other vehicles. I guess this one's just going a little too fast. or was a little too heavy or something. Not sure. But we did destroy it once again. And yeah, not in service. <laughs> That's for sure. You can't get into this bus. That thing, again, completely ruined. I'm having a good old time with this. So let's go ahead and do one more run. This one's going to be a little different, though, because I'm not going to be doing a 
huge high-speed crash. Instead, we're just going to pop it in the air a little bit and let it fly some and see what happens to it. So there we go. That was a lot more reasonable damage. Like, you can still tell that this is a bus, but for some reason, it just looks really short for some reason. And look at this. We can even get off of the rocks, except we're going to just be kind of doing circles because we only got one thruster there. That's pretty good looking there for that crash. So now let's do the bus versus bust impacts at grid map. Sometimes in a crash, I have to decide which vehicle I want to spawn up first. But that's not the case here because we just spawn up one, clone it, and then make one in the short wheelbase, and we are good to go. So there is the one we're going to be using. I chose that one just because I like the way it looks the most. So we clone it, and then we're going to swap the body, and we're good to go. Just taking a while to load up everything. Every time you click, it's like, and now we wait. And we wait. And we wait. And then it's done. Okay. And I just noticed that one doesn't have a number on the top like this one does. Still looks adorable, though. Bring this bus back over to there. That should be good distance. Yeah, it looks good enough to me. Uh-oh. That was weird. It was a little invisible for a second. Like, I hovered something over the part menu, and I thought, like, it might stay like that. All right. Lined up, ready to go. Accelerate that bus, and I'll accelerate this bus, and I'll do the maneuvering and hope they just go in a straight line. We're going to be going at about 30 miles per hour on mine so far. What's theirs going? About the same, actually. Yeah, you see, the speeds are very, very similar between these two. So here we go, little bus versus big bus. You already know who's going to win. Let's just see how badly they win by. And this is actually taking a little longer than I thought at 100 times slow. -mo. I'm used to the cars going a little faster than two buses, I guess. Ooh, interesting. Little bus is actually a little bit stronger than big bus, it looks like. It's definitely what it appears from this side. What about the other side? What does the other side look like? Oh, but on the other side, it looks like the opposite. So I think it might just be the way they crashed. And they just crashed a little bit offset, which makes it appear like that. All right, stop that bus. Taking a look at the damage there, and then taking a look at the damage here. It's actually a pretty equal fight, surprisingly. And I, I really want to just do a drag race between these two and see if there's actually a difference or not. So we're going to do that. Can you drive it all? Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. It can't steer. I just want to see, is it any faster actually at all? It has the exact same engine configuration, transmission, all of that. But it should be a heck of a lot lighter. It should be like half the weight or something because it's half the length. Okay. So we'll line them up uh, fronts or backs. See, it makes a difference in this situation. We'll do fronts. There we go. Stop sliding. They're going to crash into each other a little bit, aren't they? Oh, I actually just popped my mirror in. Look at that. I did not know that could happen. I actually pushed the mirror in on this one. That's kind of neat. Okay, so we'll park it right here. Save that spot. And then we should be good to go. Just going to go ahead and freeze physics and then accelerate both of them. And they are off. And you can see the speeds are very, very similar. But the little itty bitty bus is pulling away ever so slightly. And I do mean slightly. It is not much faster at all. All right. Hit the bumps, little bus. It actually did surprisingly well on those bumps. Let's hit the other bumps then. Get back there. I'm not going to be going as fast, though. Go a little slower for these bumps. Hit the big bumps. Let's see if you can hold up to those. Like, the wheelbase on this thing is so short, I don't know how well it'll do. Let's see here. Do like, whoa, it's, yeah, okay. I guess it's doing better than I expected. I, I don't know what I expected, but I expected it to go terribly. This is just kind of surprisingly decent. All right, not bad. Not bad at all, stubby bus. See, I keep calling it mini bus, stubby bus, micro bus. I don't know what to call it. It can be called many things. It's a bus, though. That's what's important is you call it the bus. And now it's ruined. So let's go ahead and finish this video up with a, a good old leap of death, brutal slope combo, starting with a brutal slope. And I had an idea. Someday, I should just make a custom version of brutal slope that pre-aligns the car to this spot. So that's the only spot I really use ever. You know, it just says... When you load up the map, boom, this is where your car is. Then you don't have to do anything. You just choose the vehicle you want and drive. So we'll go with the... Uh, let's go with the Zebra. I was thinking about going with the Hero, but I'm pretty sure this thing is going to get completely smushed no matter which version I use. So there's no point in using the extra power. So give me the stubby frame. And then we should be ready for takeoff. All right, here we go. How's it going to do on the bump right here? It should be fine, right? Yep, it's fine. Completely okay with that. How fast is it going to go? All right, it's up to 100 already. See, all that weight helps it go down the hill real fast. 130, 40.
Good, good, good. Staying nice and straight. 170. Looks like we're going to be almost 200 by the time we make impact. Maybe we'll actually break 200. And okay, we broke 200. Awesome. So actual speed is going to be about 215. We'll use 100 times slow-mo for this one because I know it won't take that long to get to the wall. And bye, bye, bus. Oh, camera's freaking out a little bit. We'll just take the camera off and then that's what's left. That's what's left. Basically just the engine compartment because the engine is so dense it's hard to crush it. Everything else has been crushed. And now we'll move on to the true final map which is going to be Leap of Death. And we'll use the default location to see if we start on top or not. That should be fun. And for this one, it actually does make sense to use the hero because why not go as fast as we possibly can see if we can make it all the way to the water. And then if we do, then we just go a little bit slower without using the thrusters, right? So there we got the regular bus and then we make it stubby. I wouldn't mind just having a part configuration pre-made to have the stubby versions of each one just to make it a little bit easier. Take up a little less time as you switch, but whatever. So here we go and let it fly. Right, so this is the one where we just want to get to the water. So we thrusted for as long as we could and just gonna let it fall now. And it looks like it should make it, no problem. There's a lot of forward momentum. Oh, maybe it'll be close. Let's see. Is it gonna make it? Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'll start over nothing. It's good. And in the water and destroyed. Perfect. All right. And now we'll do one more where we actually get to watch it get destroyed instead of just having it completely obliterate itself. Going a little bit slower this time. And fly. There we go. It's only about 60 miles per hour, which is actually still pretty fast for a lot of leap of deaths I do. But I wasn't even accelerating that much. You could tell because this thrusters were just kind of tapped on, tapped on, tapped on. Nothing huge happened there. Anyways, how about some 16 times slow-mo right there? And the camera just lurched all over the place, unfortunately, because the camera just does that sometimes. Either way, the bus has become flat. And I'm going to let it fall all the way to the ground. And maybe we'll do one more where I control the camera manually instead of just letting the game do it where it just kind of freaks out over the impact because that was kind of disappointing. We really couldn't see anything because of that. So there we go to the bottom and one more time. And it shouldn't have crashed through the water like that. It did that weird thing where sometimes something goes through the water and then it actually didn't. So here we go. Nice little, little looping right there. Well, we're still spinning. Spin, 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 spin. All right. So here we go. Cameraman has to do work here. Of course, it's going to hit at an awkward angle where it's like literally right in between two rocks. So there's no great camera angle for this. So like I could do it from here or I could do it from here. I think we'll start here and then move to that other position because this one you get to see the bending of the bus a little bit more. So we're watching it and yeah, it's getting crushed. Can't see too much now. So we'll swap over to the other camera and then continue watching it from here. I actually worked out pretty well. Got to see it from two different positions. And now we'll just go ahead and speed things up and I'm going to let it fall all the way to the ground once more. So we'll get to the car and then full speed as it will slowly make its way down. I at the moment have nothing else I want to say about this thing though. So until next time, this has been YBR. Enjoy the crashing.